This is ServoBuddy. It's a servo tool designed to make working with servos and ESCs effortless. If you build projects using servos, then you know the challenges of most servo tools. They're overly complicated with extra features, and just to use the basic centering function requires multiple external components. So we set out to design a simple solution that eliminates the hassles. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Hold on, let me back up for a second. Some of you might not even know what a servo is, let alone why you need to even center it. A servo is a small motor that moves things, like the control surfaces on a radio control plane. Even the cheapest servos have the same basic components, a small DC motor, a set of gears to reduce the motor's speed and increase its torque, and a control circuit that includes a processor and a tiny potentiometer for position feedback. To control a servo, it has a small plug with three wires, ground, a five volt input, and a signal wire. The servo receives its instructions through the signal wire in the form of a pulse width modulation signal. This PWM signal tells the servo exactly where to position its control arm. For example, if the PWM signals peak at 1000 microseconds, the servo arm moves to one end of its range, typically minus 45 degrees. Change that signal to 1500 microseconds, and the arm moves to the center of its range. Set the signal to 2000 microseconds, and the arm moves to the other end, typically plus 45 degrees. Some servos exceed the typical 1000 to 2000 microsecond range, but most common applications use the 90 degree total range. When you first take a servo out of its packaging and attach the control arm, there's no way to know if it's centered unless you connect it to some kind of controller. For example, when installing it on a plane's control surface, the servo needs to be in the neutral or centered position. If it's not, Powering it up could cause it to move suddenly to the center, potentially binding or damaging the control surface. For years, every time I do a project that involves servos, once I get to that point where I need to center my servos, it turns into a scavenger hunt. First, I'd have to track down my servo tester and a battery. Of course, the battery doesn't just plug into it, so I had to find an ESC or a BEC to convert the battery voltage and connect that to some raw pins with hard to read labels. Once I got that sorted out, I had to carefully match the servo plug to the right pins, hoping I didn't misalign them. And then comes the guessing game with the tester itself. What do these functions even mean? Does neutral actually mean center? You'd think I'd be done at this point, but no. I'd almost always forget to unplug the battery, leaving it to drain overnight, completely killing it. Now, don't get me wrong, these cheap servo testers are a good value for what they are. But simplicity, that's definitely not part of the package. I always wanted something that was super simple and you could just plug it in, it works, and it centers the servo. That's where the servo buddy comes in. It makes servo centering as simple as it gets. Plug your servo into the channeled slot, press the button, and boom, your servo is centered. Press the button again and it cycles through the endpoints in the center sequentially. It turns it on, toggles between positions, and even shuts the whole thing down with a two second press. Oh, and if you're forgetful, it'll automatically turn off 60 seconds after the last button push. When it's off, it's off. It draws zero current. So no more finding dead batteries because you forgot to unplug it. But wait, there's more. Plug in an ESC with a battery and Servo Buddy flips into motor test mode. Yep, it can tell the difference between a servo and an ESC. Now when you hit the button, the motor spins up at low throttle for about a half a second, so then you can check the direction of your motor. The built-in screen gives you a clear, real-time feedback, so you always know what's going on. Because let's face it, a tool should make your life easier, not make it more difficult. At the core of Servo Buddy is the Pico RP2040 microcontroller. For this example, we're focusing on three key pins. A0, which is connected to pin 1. A1, which is connected to pin 3 and GPIO pin 28, connected to pin 2 in the middle. These pins play a critical role in detecting what's connected to the servo buddy. Let's say you plug in a servo with the signal pin on the left and press the button. The first thing that it does is it activates the MOSFET on pin 1 and pin 3, grounding both of those pins. Then the microcontroller checks pin 2 
the center pin, to see if there's a voltage. ESCs provide their own power from a separate battery, so if pin 2 has no external voltage, we know it's a servo. Once the device is confirmed, Servo Buddy deactivates the MOSFETs on pin 1 and pin 3. And it activates the MOSFET on pin 2, connecting the servo's power pin to Servo Buddy's internal power source. Now Servo Buddy needs to check the polarity. To do this, analog pins A0 and A1 are set as inputs to detect voltage, and the microcontroller activates the MOSFET on pin 3, connecting it to ground. Then it checks pin 1 through the analog input, A0, and if there's a voltage detected on pin 1, it's the ground wire. But in this case, pin 1 is the signal wire, so there's no voltage detected because the signal wire will not pass a voltage high enough to be detected. Next, the MOSFET on pin 3 is deactivated, and the MOSFET on pin 1 is activated, connecting it to ground. Now, the microcontroller checks pin 3 through the analog input A1, and this time it detects a voltage, confirming the polarity. If neither pin shows a voltage, Servo Buddy will just continue to scan. Once the polarity is figured out, Servo Buddy knows the device is a servo and the signal wire is on pin 1. At this point, the analog pin A0 is switched to an output and sends a PWM signal at 1500 microseconds, which is the signal for center. At this moment, you'll see the servo go to the center of the range. From here, pressing the button cycles through the servo positions. The next press will change the PWM signal to 2000 microseconds, moving the servo to one end of its range. Press the button again, the microcontroller changes the PWM signal to 1500 microseconds again, putting it back in the center, and then you do it one more time and it'll go to the other end of its range. As hobbyists, we built the tool that we wanted. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna release 50 units that are beta units, and they're actually numbered on the back. So it's a limited run, it's a collector's edition. We're actually doing the final assembly by hand. We're 3D printing the enclosure, and what we want to do is for about 30 days, have you guys use these tools. So we want to see if you guys like Servo Buddy, what kind of feedback you have. What I've learned over the years, I get the best feedback from the community. So I want to hear from you guys. Tear it apart. And we're going to sell it for $25. That's the target retail price for the final version, which I don't have an actual date for the final version yet, but it'll probably be in about 60 to 90 days. Um, in the meantime, you can buy this version. Once they're sold out, they're sold out. And if you just want to wait for the final version, that's fine. Just sign up. We'll notify you when it's ready and you can buy it for $25. And we want your feedback. No feedback is bad feedback. Ultimately, we wanted to do something that's meaningful, useful, and simple. And that's where Servo Buddy came from. So we'll have all the links in the description. If you're interested, Thanks for participating and we're excited to get your feedback and let's see where this project goes.